Well, the broad consensus seems to uh, seems to state that uh, India has done their bit. We've gone to attack and uh, we have uh, attacked the crucial parts uh, that we're looking at. And now retaliation is unlikely and more importantly, ex escalation is unlikely. And that seems to be what uh, we are uh, factoring in. We'll, uh, you know, try to get you more reactions and get you more updates on what's happening on the border. But the markets, they have digested this. You know, clearly, uh, since we're tracking the markets today, we had opened up with a cut of around 100, 120 points odd. At the low point of the day, we had moved all the way to around 10,750 odd. From there, we've seen a big recovery. The mid-cap index as well has seen quite a big recovery. And stocks on the whole, they're recovering as we speak. Tata Motors is at the high point of the day. And a whole host of stocks, like Bharti Airtel as well, is moving higher. Looking at the broader markets, a couple of stocks that do stand out now as we speak. Uh, NRB bearings, we're seeing volumes pick up on that particular stock. That's moving higher. And from the pharma space, Newland Laboratories, that's a stock that we had highlighted earlier as well. Uh, in this month itself, the stock is up more than 50%. In the last few minutes, moving to the high point of the day as well. Hi, Sumera. Hi, Nigel. Good afternoon. And, uh, you know, clearly I think some nerves may have, must have been calmed in the market after we heard the foreign secretary speak, especially the way he mentioned that it was a uh, you know, non-military preemptive strike. Yes. And uh, also uh, the fact that uh, the onus now moves to, uh, shifts to Pakistan to actually dismantle the remaining terror camps, which sort of signifies that, uh, you know, this is, this is exactly what it is, which is an attack at a terror target. All right, uh, we'll keep tracking that big developing story through the day. But for now, let's talk about some stocks which are actually moving around. And top of mind, of course, today is DHFL. We've seen another downgrade come in from Ikra in the span of a month. And Abhishek is here uh, to tell us, um, you know, what Ikra has said and what DHFL has said in response. Abhishek. Well, Sumera, Ikra has downgraded the commercial papers of DHFL to A2 plus from A1 plus. So that's a two-notch downgrade. And however, you know, they continue to keep DHFL's rating under watch with negative implications. So there is moderation in company's financial, uh, you know, uh, balance sheet. Uh, deposit outflow of more than 1,350 crore actually took place between mid of September to about uh, end of December. So there are challenges being faced, you know, by DHFL in terms of raising funds, mobilizing uh, from uh, banks or bond market, which is impacting the company's ability to actually grow its balance sheet. So limited fresh business along with sizable securitization or assignment of portfolios is actually shrinking the balance sheet and is, limi uh, and, and is limiting the company in terms of the further sell down that they can can do so present resources are sufficient to make repayments up to march 2019 the moderation in capitalization level is another hindrance or a risk of worry and they will monitor the stake sale that dhfl has been talking about along with the fact that strategic uh, strategic investor is uh, coming into dhfl let's hear out the management what they had to say there is uh, post 21st September, and I think it's important to note that that the company went on a sell down mode of uh, its retail assets, uh, and uh, you know within three months pay made a total payment of almost 18,000 crores of all its obligations. Mm. Then having sufficient cash reserves and investments today, equivalent to about four and a half thousand crores, mm. you know the company has made uh, you know. Uh, um, uh, uh, substantial strides, you know, in, in overcoming, one, the liquidity challenge that we faced on 21st September. We have almost 13,000 crores of portfolio available for sell down right now. Uh, okay. If we were to exercise that option, all right. And the other big story, of course, remains uh, the drop in the crude oil prices. And Manisha is here for that. Manisha, on any other day, this would have been our biggest headline, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> totally. Uh, but, you know, even with the 3% decline in the crude oil prices, it could be a support for the consuming economies. We have seen the biggest one-day decline in the crude come in for 2019. But even with this uh, decline, it is 20% up for the crude oil prices. What has impacted the decline has been the U.S. president's tweet uh, saying that the crude prices in the global market markets are way too high and he's telling the OPEC members to relax and take it easy and uh, uh, ensure that the prices do not run up. Apart from that, the U.S. production is at record highs at 12 million barrels per day. The U.S. exports are at an all-time highs of around 4.8 million barrels per day as well and that in turn also seems to be pulling the prices down. Well, the view from the experts is that while we may have made a bottom for the crude oil prices, we may have also made a near-term top for the prices and for the next few days, it really is going to be about a range bound trend continuing for crude.
Okay, all right. Thanks so much for that, Manisha. Well, with crude oil prices tumbling, we spoke to Mr. M. K. Surana, CMD of HPCL, to get his crude outlook. Let's listen in to what he had to tell us. There is a degrowth worldwide as far as Europe is concerned, as far as uh, China is concerned. And to that extent, I, I expect prices of oil to be in the range of, let's say, below 70. Maybe momentary uh, spikes may be there. Now, the quarter four you are looking at, as of today, it appears that there will be a uh, inventory gains and there is a rising uh, crude market. Okay, all right. A lot of stocks, though, buzzing around. Sonal joins us to tell us all the stocks that are in the news today. Sonal? Hi, good afternoon, Nigel. Well, I'll start with Max India. There have been some reports doing rounds. Uh, so I'm just reiterating that. The report suggests that True North will be acquiring 51% in Max Bupa Health uh, from Max India, and the consideration will be around 1,100 crore rupees. These are just reports, and CNBC TV 18 has not independently verified them. But the stock is reacting to this news today. Other stocks that I'm watching out for include Sharda Motors. Well, the company has negotiated and signed a joint venture with one of the companies that is called Exhaust Technology for an electric vehicle venture. Additionally, the board has also agreed to demerge their automobile seating business. So that is some news coming in for the company. Lakshmi Vilas Bank, well for them, Brickwork Ratings has revised the uh, ratings for their unsecured non-convertible bonds and basically they have revised it downwards. So that is a negative news coming in. And there are some brokerages that have th that have written on a lot of stocks. Well, I'll start with City that has written on gas stocks, gas sector overall. Well, India's January LNG imports were sequentially stable at around that 1.6 MMT mark. However, the 10-month FI19 LNG imports are around six are up around 6% on a YY basis, and this is lower than what we saw in the last few years. However, in pecking order, their picks are IGL followed by Petronet LNG, MGL, GSPL, Gujarat Gas, and Gale. Overall, they are positive on the gas sector. Access Cap has written on Adani Ports. Well, that stock was in focus yesterday, down around 9 odd percent. They say that the acquisition was very expensive and the future uh, the free cash flows they have taken a back seat and this will this is done at a premium valuations that is not positive for the company and lastly jeffries has initiated a coverage on uh, united phosphorus with a target price of 1000 rupees per share and they have a buy rating on the stock they also say that the arista acquisition that will only add to the company's bottom line and the synergies that it will bring in will give better growth prospects for the company back to you so, well, thanks very much for that, and thanks to our entire team for um, you know uh, laying out the list of the top stocks. So, here's a quick recap: we have DHFL, HPCL, BPCL, IOC. There's Max India, Sharda Motor, Lakshmi Vilas Bank, IGL, Petronet LNG, MGL, GSPL, Gujarat Gas. There's Gale, Adani Ports, and finally there is UPL. A quick break for now. We'll come back with more on the market. Lots of stock-specific action also lined up next.